Hi, I'm Myra Ferguson for Ajar Productions, and in this video, I'd like to show you how to create a Venetian blind transition effect with InDesign and N5. Here's how the effect looks. The two images automatically switch in segments that flip over to reveal the other side. Let's jump over to InDesign to see how to set it up. This effect uses a combination of several multi-state objects, or MSOs, that are converted to 3D flip cards and set to autoplay. While I set this up, I'm going to show you a few InDesign tricks to set it up a little faster, including placing an image into multiple frames, which is a technique that my fellow Ajar teammate, Erica Gamut, demonstrated for Creative Pro. I'm going to place the two images into a series of seven frames. To make the seven frames all the same size and to eliminate the space, I'm going to use Gridify and a modifier key. I'll use the rectangle frame tool to draw the frame the width and height that I want for the effect's dimensions. Without releasing the mouse, I'm going to use the right arrow key on my keyboard to make six divisions, so I end up with seven frames. I'm still not going to release the mouse just yet because I have these spaces in between each division that I want to eliminate. To get rid of them, I'll press the Command key on macOS or the Control key on Windows while pressing the left arrow key until the spaces are gone. I'm going to make a new layer, copy and paste these in place for later, and hide the layer with the copies for now. I have my seven frames, but I want to place the image in them so that it looks seamless. To do that, I'll select the seven frames, go to Object, Paths, Make Compound Path. I'll place the first image. Notice that it treats all the frames as a single frame. I'll go to Object, Fitting, Content Aware Fit to fit the image into the frames. Once the image is positioned and scaled, Let's release the compound path to go back to separate frames by going to Object, Paths, Release Compound Path. The image now only shows up in the first frame, so we'll need to add it to the other frames. Click on the Content Grabber to select the image and copy it. Select the next frame, right click, and select Paste Into. Click on each frame and repeat pasting the image into the rest of the frames. Let's hide these and repeat the process for the second image. I'll hide layer 1 and show layer 3. Let's select all the frames and go to Object, Paths, Make Compound Path. Let's place the second image Right click and select Fitting, Content Aware Fit. We'll release the compound path, Object, Paths, Release Compound Path, click on the Content Grabber, select the image, copy, and paste into each of the other frames. Now we're ready to make our MSOs. I want the airplane image on top, so let's drag layer 3 below layer 1. I'll make a marquee selection for the first set of frames, open the Object States panel, and click the plus button at the bottom to convert the selection to an MSO. Repeat making MSOs out of the remaining sets of frames. We now have our seven MSOs, so let's make them all 3D flip cards. I'll select the first MSO and go to N5 Interactive Widgets 3D Flip Card. In the 3D Flip Card dialog, I'll set the flip direction to horizontal. I'll set each of the remaining MSOs to also be horizontal 3D flip cards. As 3D flip cards, these will individually flip when they're clicked. Because we want them to automatically flip repeatedly, we can use the slideshow widget. Let's go to N5 Interactive Widgets Slideshow and select the first 3D flip card, which is also an MSO. In the slideshow dialog, let's set it to autoplay and loop and let's deselect crossfade and swipe to change image. If we want the duration of the flip to be slower, we can increase the speed. Let's make it one second. And let's apply the same settings to the other 3D flip cards. You could stop here if you want, but I want to show you the result we get at this point. Let's save and export. 
Notice that the images are flipping automatically, but we're seeing the white of the paper behind the images. And depending on the scaling of the browser, you might see thin white lines between the 3D flip cards. We can make this transition more seamless. Let's go back to InDesign and I'll show you how. I'll select the 3D flip card, copy it and paste it in place. Then I'll drag the right side so that it fills the entire width of the frames. Because it's a copy, it already has the 3D flip card and the slideshow settings applied. We want to keep the slideshow settings, but we don't want it to flip. So in the 3D flip card dialog, let's set it to none. Now let's send it to the back. I'll right click, select Arrange, Send to Back. Before we export again, let's make one more change. Remember how I mentioned that 3D flip cards will flip if you click on them? If you want to make them so that they aren't clickable, we can place an invisible rectangle over them. An invisible rectangle is one with no fill and no stroke. Placing an object over a button or a link makes it no longer clickable, so we'll use that to our advantage. Let's save and export again. Now we have a seamless Venetian blind transition effect. Please tell us in the comments how you might use this effect in your N5 exported content. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and be sure to check out N5 at n5.us. Thanks so much for watching.